Retouch for me makes your life truly easy by saving a tons of time on retouching. But if you're wondering how all the tools work and you want to see them in action, well, this is the video for you. We're going to review every single plugin that Retouches for me offer. To make it easier for you, I separated every single tool for you that you can find in chapters below. You can either find them by scrolling the red bar below or looking at the description box that's right under this video. If so if there's one specific tool you want to look out for, well, just hit that link below and it'll take you there. I'll also show you the before and after every single retouching plugin so you can see how they impact your photography and your portrait workflow. And very quickly, if you're interested in picking up any of these plugins, Retouch Me offered me a discount called Evans V20, which will save you 20% off or more in every plugin you buy in or you want to subscribe to. At the end of this video, there's also free tools that are available via Retouch Me, so we'll check these out also. So stick around. To get started, the best way we can actually use any of these plugins is using Photoshop, of course, which is the method that we'll use to review every single one of these plugins. Using Photoshop makes adjustments on the fly really easy and stacking also much easier if ever you're doing a complete A to Z portrait using all the tools. There are also lightweight uh, standalone apps for every tool you can use. If you only need a really, really quick fix that you don't need to spend time in Photoshop, you can do it on a standalone app that's available for every single tool. So in most of the plugin, there's a blend effect that you can actually apply to either change the way that uh, the tool impacts your portrait or you can actually scale up or down using the opacity. Again, I'll recommend whatever I'm doing in every single one of them, but just that keep in mind for every single one of those plugins. Let's get started. For most tools, I recommend adding these two options. One is duplicating the base layer. This allows you to stack uh, every single one of them and it's way less destructive than, using, than working on the base layer, which makes it flexible if you wanna correct stuff afterwards. It makes your files a little more heavy, but at least it gives you a little more control if ever it's a very fine, specific portrait that you wanna retouch and do a good job at it. Two, in every single case, I'll be recommending make mask or having the soft light option for a better stacking and also better weight file. It makes the things a little easier on you and your computer and your disks. There's also a tool that takes care of putting all of these things together called a panel, which we'll review at the end of this video. Retouch for me, heal. So Retouch for me heal is the basic retouching tool that will correct blemishes and any of the skin issues you'll find in your portrait. I usually start all my portrait using this feature. Heal takes care of uh, skin blemishes like pimples, scars, and anything that we don't like with a single click. And while it's doing that, it's still keeping the skin natural texture, so you won't lose any pores by over softening the skin. It's just gonna correct a few blemishes or issues that you find on the skin or your subject without destroying the rest of the portrait. It's really perfect to create a natural looking skin without over smoothing. I recommend using this tool as a mask by using the mask button, of course. If you find you went too far or actually it removed some freckles because they're hard to spot, it's easier to brush off with a layer mask uh, with your tablet or whatever else you're using. Retouch for me, dodge and burn. So the dodge and burn is hands down my favorite tool out of the whole retouching suite. It automatically applies the dodge and burn technique enhancing skin tones by balancing shadows and highlights. The dodge and burn effect creates a more polished look while maintaining uh, the depth and dimension of the subject's face. If you're curious about which zones are taken care of by the retouch for me tool, you can press the preview button located at the top left of your screen. It'll create a highly visible mask you can actually use to see where it went and where it didn't go. For the dodge and burn, I recommend converting it to a soft light layer as it allows you to control how much the layer interacts with your subject or with your base layers. To me, I really use it as a visual aid like that. I can see clearly where the tool went to do its uh, burning or dodging. After you're done processing the file using the Retouch Me Dodge and Burn, do not forget to convert the layer blend to mold to soft light. It's very important, they're also going to see something gray and white and it's going to be kind of, kind of odd. This dodge and burn though happens only at the small level or the micro level. So dodge and burn to give it volume, the next plugin will be actually more helpful. Retouch for me, portrait volumes. This tool enhances the contour of the subject by emphasizing the shadows and highlight like the dodge and burn is doing before but at a more macro level. The tool adds depth and dimension to the subject's face and it works really well by creating more dynamic portraits uh, without the need to use complex adjustments uh, that you can do yourself if you have the time, but this saves a lot of time and does it automatically. If you need some additional controls, add a layer mask and apply a soft brush to remove the parts you like less. I personally like to change the opacity to, of the plugin to something, a level that I like, like that I can control how much depth I'm giving to the subject 
without looking too fake or too basically polished. Now that we actually completed the lighting, let's move on to color. Retouch for me skin tone. The Retouch for me skin tone is designed to even out skin tone and this tool adjusts the color inconsistencies you can find across the body, especially with the face and the legs, etc. It enters a smooth and natural complexion by correcting areas where skin tones may differ, for example, be due to lighting or due to makeup and any other factors. Again, to see the original, click the top right button where it looks like kind of a half walnut, if I may say. And to view the changes that were made by the skin tone tool, you can simply click on the empty head uh, icon located on top of the screen. And as usual, it's possible to, you can edit the skin tone adjustment that were made directly on the app or the plugin, but I recommend doing that in Photoshop. Let's say you wanna go back, at least you have it in the backup. And for the skin tone, I also recommend converting it into a soft light layer. As it allows you to control how much it affects other layers, converting to a soft light layer again makes it more flexible for you at the end while it helps you can basically control the way it interacts with other layers. Use a mask to remove the areas you'd rather keep the tone similar. Do not forget to convert the layer blend mode to soft light. And to help you take things a little further, we'll look at another skin tool correction named Skin Mask. Retouch for me, Skin Mask. So Skin Mask help you basically select skin really, really fast with the power of AI. So with this tool, you'll be able to really bring out the skin in one single layer and apply the corrections if let's say you wanna go further than where the skin tone went. For example, if you wanna color grade the skin only without affecting the clothing, the hair, et cetera, et cetera, you can now do so really quickly using the skin mask. Again, the time savings are really big, let's say if you do a lot of uh, work that includes skin or new tones. Again, I said it before in other plugins, but now it's really, really important that you make a copy of your base layer if ever you want to use that plugin, as the plugin will erase the rest of the data, it only keep the skin on that layer alive. So you won't mask it, it's gonna erase everything. Be advised. After this is done, towards the bottom left of the plugin screen, you'll see a skin option that allows you to select the region of skin you need for editing. You can choose between face, body, or all skin. You can even create two different regions if you want to. Pro tip, if ever you use that tool like the way I do, which is to mainly color the skin tone very quickly, uh, what I recommend is change the blend mode to that layer to color only. The reason why I'm doing this is because it leaves the other layers like heal and dodge and burn free of the mask effect and you'll basically be able to blend all of them together without uh, basically doing a destructive type of work. Again, just makes your life easy. And now that we're done with the skin, let's move on to the small parts and the eyes. Retouch for me eye bundle. Well, the bundle really contains two tools and we'll review them in this bundle together. Retouch for me eye brilliance. So this tool sharpens and basically brightens the eyes and enhances the clarity also of them. As you know, the eyes are a very important tool as people are really focusedly intent on looking them first and then scan the rest of the image. And it makes the eyes a little more striking and vibrant in portraits, which is really good. Again, to adjust the tool, just to make sure it's the way you like it, uh, just take a look at where the mask is applied by pressing the second button from the right. From there, you can either erase it directly into the plugin or even better, um, bring it in Photoshop and create a layer mask and brush it off. I find the layer adjustments a little faster and easier versus doing it directly in the app. And the second tool is Retouch For Me Eye Vessel. So this is really, really important if ever you do a lot of headshots and yes, some people that are very tired because they work very hard is this tool reduces the redness of the blood vessels that contain the eye the eyes. Having wider eyes makes them look a little more vibrant and healthy. In my opinion, it's a very quick way to improve the subject overall face appearance and while ensuring that the eyes actually look refreshed and healthy and they're you know, ready to work. And whatever I said about the eye brilliance tool, well, the same applies to here. Uh, I always find it easier to bring it into a layer and then adjusting the opacity or making the adjustments using a layer mask. And now that we cover the eyes, let's move down just a little bit to your smile. Retouch for me, white teeth. The Retouch for me white teeth plugin basically automatically makes sure that your skin are basically white. It corrects basically for yellow and discoloration while keeping a very natural appearance. It's very easy to go overboard with whitening teeth, so this does it in a natural way. This tool is really perfect for headshots, uh, beauty shots, where uh, smiles your appearance, and it does it really easy, like that you'll have to spend five to 10 minutes doing it every single time. So if the effect is too strong for you, you can always lower the opacity by bringing in the layer into Photoshop and adjusting there. Again, it's a less destructive way of working since you have the base layer and if you wanna revert back to it, you can actually do so very easily by just keeping the layer at 100% or going to 50 or wherever you deem it reasonable. And speaking of really clear things, 
Let's look at the shiny parts of the face with the modifier. Retouch for me, modifier. The modifier tool is very simple. It's simply there to remove the oily spots or the shiny parts, if people are hot, let's say, from photograph, resulting in a really nice matte finish for the skin. And I guess it's subject dependent. Uh, let's say black people tend to have oily skin and it's a natural way to look at them. But if your subject has way too shiny skin uh, and the highlights, you wanna keep them, well, it's a good way to attract attention. Or if you wanna reduce them, just use that tool and basically you can lower the blend in directly onto the layers. And now that we've done touching the face and the skin and the subject human face, let's move on to your set. Retouch for me, clean backdrop. Retouch for me clean backdrop is maybe my third favorite setup or plugin as it automatically removes wrinkles, spots, and dirt from your backgrounds. And if you know, if you don't know, like having a dirty background is really distracting for the eye as your eye just goes towards it and you completely ignore the subject. The Retouch for me clean backdrop tool is really a huge time saver if you're a studio photographer like me, if you do, let's say, portrait on backdrops or canvases, or actually you're a product photographer doing some really small stuff. If ever you're using that tool, it's really important that you protect the subject from those modifications that the plugin will add by simply selecting the protect the subject by auto masking the subject. So press the auto mask button and you should be done. It's located at the bottom left of the screen. And to view the mask, you simply have to click that button that looks like a rectangle with a square in it. It's located at the top of your screen. Now that your backdrop is clean and your face looks great, what about your clothing? Retouch for me, fabric. So this tool is really designed to clean and smooth out all the issues that you can find with clothing, let's say wrinkled shirt or dirt that's available in your shirt. It really improves the overall look of the subject wardrobe and ensures a polished image, especially when doing professional headshots. You know that if ever you see wrinkles, it's kind of hard to retouch, but Retouch Me does it automatically. And here I really love to show that before and after. You can see where the fabric is corrected and where it's not. It's really impactful. Now that our work is complete, let's talk about the free plugins. Here we are. Well, it's actually totally free, so you can actually go and download them. As of now I'm recording, it's free. And it's the first one is frequency separation. So the good old frequency separation, which I use very often. Um, it's If you don't know what it is, it's a retouching technique that basically divides the image into two layers one for texture and one for tone and color. This separation really allows you to have precise editing. So for example, you only want to retouch a texture, you can do so by targeting the top layer, I usually we call it, and goes there to edit skin, let's say, or if you want to go for a base layer for anything that's basically tone and anything that has a large surface, usually will be affected by the base layer. Again, frequency separation is my goal to retouching as it was demonstrated by really great people like Earth Oliver or Seth, let's say. While using this free tool, well, the plugin basically runs the calculation for you and puts everything together in an orderly fashion so you can really retouch the things that you could not get to. I'm thinking here of like a traditional heel button. That's gonna be really hard to retouch fabric, let's say, or clothing. Uh, doing it with frequency separation makes it really easy if ever the tool didn't go as far as you want to or there's major corrections to be done. If you don't have it set up already as a basically an action on your Photoshop version, well, it's actually a very neat tool to have it run automatically. While there are really complicated settings for the nerdy people out there that wants to separate into like three layers or four layers, uh, here's the way I would use the frequency separation if ever you're just getting started. First, duplicate the layer you want to edit. Second, I highly recommend clicking the button Make Layers. This will allow you to retouch the low end to the high end of the skin or the background. Third, click the button with the two bars to select two layers. The two layers simplifies the workflow. Three is really for heavier retouching. I would personally pick two to simplify our goal of retouching since we have to save time, right? As for the blurring method, my favorite is median as it creates less bleed on the low frequency. You can see that clearly wherever if ever you look at portraits, basically they like maybe like seven years ago where the technique of using the wrong basically base was uh, out there and you can see skin bleeding out of the face, which is not great. Fourth, the pixel side. This in a nutshell enables you to control how much of the low frequency you want to adjust. The deeper you go, the more you can actually play with the color and tones. 10 to 15 pixels is usually a good area to start. And in addition to that tool, the frequency separation, there's also a thing called the panel which allows you to access all the tools you've actually purchased if ever you want to just have them in a very neat package. Like that you don't have to go to filters and then uh, go back to this. I don't like the panel though, because uh, if ever you want to, uh, in a nutshell, control it a little more, it does it automatically without you having to review it. 
great if you're doing really fast editing, but if you're doing a really, really poor precise or something a little more controlled, it's less desirable. I would personally go back to the filter if ever you want to do some really precise work. But again, to each your own, if you want to go fast, use a panel. If you want to go slow and take your time and make slight adjustments, even though you're saving tons of time, again, the filter button is really the way to go. Again, this has been Evans B. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope I save you a bit of time in your future editing and also on your retouching. So if ever you need any of these plugins, you can actually use the code EVENTSB20 at checkout or using any of the links below. If ever you have any questions, you can leave them below. I'll try to answer them as fast as possible. And on this, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.